Hi everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my brand new craft room. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you all about some of my favorite websites that I use to create designs with my Cricut, do all sorts of things with the Cricut. I think that you're going to find a few websites that maybe you've never tried before or maybe even get some information on some of your old favorites. Be sure to let me know in the comments what your favorite website to use with your Cricut is, and if I don't already use it, I will for sure check it out and maybe feature it in the next video. Now be sure to subscribe to my channel, that way you don't miss out on any of the fun crafty content that we have coming up. And you'll get to see kind of the evolution of my brand new studio. I know it's a little bit boring right now, but we are working on it and it's going to be amazing when we are all finished. So let's go ahead and get started on going over some of my favorite websites to use with your Cricut. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. Wordmark.it is one of my favorite websites to use with my Cricut for a lot of reasons but it really makes choosing a font so much easier than scrolling through all your fonts in design space. So what you just do is you can put in your name or whatever word or phrase you want it to say in the big white box and you either hit enter or click the arrow. Now you might need to install an extension for it to pull up all of your fonts, but that is totally safe. It, this website is great, completely, completely safe. So it's gonna show you all of your different fonts that you have on your computer. And what I love about this is that it is so, so simple to see everything. And what you can do is select a couple that you like. So you can just sort of scroll through and choose ones that you like and you like the look of. I'm just choosing some random ones. And you can see literally every font that you have, which is great. Now this won't pull up Cricut fonts. It only pulls up ones that are on your computer. So you'll need to make sure that you keep that in mind, but you can see everything that you have, which I think is fantastic. There's so many different great options with fonts and I have an entire list of websites that have free fonts. So be sure to check that out. I'll link it down below. So once you've filtered out the fonts that you like, you've clicked on them and chosen them, all you need to do is up at the top, click filter selected fonts. And it's gonna show you the fonts that you chose all together so that you can really see which ones you like and which ones you don't. So if you don't like a font, you wanna get rid of it because you know you're not gonna use it, just hover over it and you'll see here that you have an X button so you can remove it. And you can do that to any of the fonts that you don't like. So as you go through and you say, no, you know what? These are the two I'm choosing between. Then you can go back over to Design Space and pick those fonts and see which one you like. You can also click on that plus button and make this super big and really easy to see. Let's say that we like this. We don't wanna to have to type it into Design Space. We like the way it looks. It's everything we want it to be. What you can use is your snipping tool from Windows or in your Mac software, I believe it is the print screen tool. But what I'm gonna do, I have mine saved here at the bottom of my screen. I just have it pinned and it's just called the snipping tool. What I'm gonna do is click new and just draw a big square around my name. Click save and I'm gonna just save it on my Cricut folder here. That way I can use it later for something that I wanna do. So I'm just gonna call it Corinne one. Click save and it's good to go. When you go into Design Space, you'll just have to remove the background like you would with any design that you took from Google or something like that. And you can just use it just like a regular font. Now you won't be able to edit the font or anything like that, but as long as you're happy with the way it looks, you're good to go. Wordmark.it is an awesome resource and it's completely free. There are things that you can purchase on here, but you don't need to. You really can just use this completely free. That's what I do, I use it free and it's absolutely fine. I have no issues using it. Wordmark.it is an awesome resource and it's completely free. There are things that you can purchase on here, but you don't need to. You really can just use this completely free. That's what I do. I use it free and it's absolutely fine. I have no issues using it. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I use remove.bg a lot. Even with Design Space, and them adding the removal tool for the background, I still prefer remove.bg. I think it does a much better job. What you'll do is click on upload image and choose the file that you want it to remove the background. Now it really kind of depends and you may need to play with it to find a image that's gonna work for what you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this one right here and click open. 
Now you'll see it's just a picture of me in front of a white fence and this one does have a little frame around it but what you'll see is that it took off all of that background design. So now I have this awesome simple picture of myself and I can use it for all sorts of things. The other thing that you can do is you can actually use this automate your image and you can use it in this website called Designify where you can actually change your image. So it's really fun if you wanted to use it for print and cut. There's a ton of different options, lots of fun things that you can do. So definitely play around with this. This website's super fun too. It lets you do all sorts of really, really cool things to it. We'll play with that some other time. But the other thing that I really love about this is that you can download it in HD or just the preview image. It really depends on how you're going to use the image. So for something like this, if I was gonna use this in a print and cut type of situation, I want to make sure I download the HD version, but if it's just some words and text or a black and white image, I would just say use the regular download because you're going to cut it out. It'll be fine. But if you're printing and cutting, definitely use the HD option. I have shown you guys Canva in a couple of different situations, but I always have to give them a shout out because they are fantastic and super easy to use. You can have a free account and do a lot with it. And what's really fun is if you have a business, they have lots of really great business options that will help you create not only like business cards and logos, but also content for your Instagram, your Facebook, things like that. And they have templates, which is great. But with Cricut Design Space, one of the things that I love is that it's super easy to design your own like SVG. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use an Instagram post I find that to be a pretty decent size to like work with if I'm creating a design. Now do keep in mind that there are things that do cost. So if they have a little crown like this one and it says pro, you do need to have a pro account to use it. But there's plenty of things that you can get without a pro account. So let's just search for a heart and we are gonna filter this down and we are gonna filter it to price for free and click apply filters. Now you can see you have a ton of options and some of them are animated, but a lot of them are just plain static images. So let's just use this cute heart here. And then let's say I just wanna add some text. All I simply need to do is go over to text and you can just put in add a little body text and I'm just gonna type the word love. The next thing that I'm gonna do is just make this bigger so that we can actually see it. And all I have to do from here is go ahead and pick out my font that I want to use. So let's just use Blueberry. I think that's fun. There's tons of fonts on here to use. And we'll just kind of get them lined up where we want them. Now, all you simply have to do is click on Share, and you're going to click Download. Now, you'll see that I have a lot of options here that you won't have if you're using a free account. But again, it's the same idea of using that snipping tool. Just go ahead and download it as a PNG click download, and you'll need to just remove the background when you put this into design space. So again, I'll just put it into my Cricut folder and we'll just call it love one. And it's good to go. Upload it to Cricut Design Space. I'll link a video that shows you how to upload an image that has a background and clean it up. That way you guys can see how to do that in case you don't know how. But it's super easy to design. You can change the colors as well. So you'll see here that I've got kind of similar ideas to what Design Space has. So you can easily change the color to anything that you want it to be. And that will translate over into design space for the most part. Um, but you will still need to do some tweaking to it because it's not technically an SVG. Now, if you have the Canva Pro, I'll link Pro account down below that you can um, sign up for, you can actually download an SVG. So if I click download and I choose SVG, I can actually choose the transparent background, download it, and then it will be an SVG instead of a PNG, and I won't need to do any kind of a cleaning up of the image, and it will be in the two separate colors. Just something to keep in mind if you wanna make SVGs in Canva. There's so much that you can do. They have lots of elements that you can use. There are so many things. There, really the possibilities are very endless with this. You can find all sorts of different designs. And again, play around, see what you can use for free, but there's also a lot that you can do for paid. So just be sure to kind of click around and find some fun things to play with. 
This next website is really, really fun, and it is called wordart.com. What's really great about it is that you can create your own fun word art. You can see some examples right here. So what we're going to do is click create your own. Now it's gonna bring up this little, what I would call like an app inside of the website. And you can, you'll click here to kind of see. So it's really easy, it's very intuitive. You're gonna input words, click to visualize, customize. So let's input some words and we can use really whatever words that we want to. So what you're gonna do is just go ahead and change the words. So let's just go with like animals. Let's go with cat, uh, alligator, um, monkey. Uh, I don't know, I'm just running out of animals in my brain already. Dog, fish, goose, um, I don't know, turtle. Uh, anybody else, any thoughts? <laughs> I'm sure you guys are yelling at me that there's like a million freaking. I'm sure that you guys are screaming at me like all these different animals and I can't think of a single one right now and I don't know why. But you can do all sorts of things. So then you can just do like, I don't know, truck, a banana. We're just gonna make up words at this point. Avocado. Pepsi, stapler, again, you can use whatever words that you want. Now what's fun is you can change the size of your words. So if you want certain words to be bigger than others, you want them to be highlighted, you can change the sizing on them and just sort of play around with that. The color is all set to default, but you can again change that and just pick whatever color you want it to be. Click apply and then again, just sort of click on here and apply and just change the colors. There's no wrong way to make your colors. Do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. Now what's fun is you can click capitalize and it will automatically capitalize all of your letters, which is great because I totally didn't do that. Now what we're gonna do is go to shapes and you'll see there are a ton of great shapes that you can use. Now, I don't know what shape I'd use for this, but you could really use anything that you like. And they do have categories. So you can go through and like, let's say you wanna do a Christmas one you can add shapes, you can do all sorts of things, you got clouds, lots of fun stuff. There's also fonts that you can choose from, so you can kind of pick whatever font that you want. Next is your layout, and it's got all these different options here for how you can do it, but I'm just gonna leave it on auto, and I'm just gonna leave it the 20% density. You can change the density up a bit, just depending on how you want it to be. And then for your style, you'll see that you can kind of Play around with again some different things word emphasis transparent backgrounds which i love a transparent background um you can do a background image you can do animations if you want to i don't think i need one but you can do lots and lots of things with this then click visualize and it will take a second to load your design but you can see here that you have this fun different like shaped item now i'll make the um un uh, untransparent background so that you guys can see this better but what you can do now is from here, once you've got this all set, you can go in and change the colors of your words and play around with it a little bit more and really do what you want with it and click apply. Then you can go into shapes and change the shape if you want it to be something different. So let's say we wanna put it into a triangle, click visualize. It'll again visualize your shape and it will change it up to a triangle. So there's lots and lots of things that you can do. Like we have a tree, let's visualize it with a tree. Lots of super fun stuff to do with this and it's so easy. Now, the other thing that I love is that you can print this out. This is something that would probably be, like the way I have it designed would be really hard to weed, but you could absolutely make it weedable. So I think this came out really, really cute and I think it's super fun. It's a really fun way to use the different word art and it's, there's just a lot you can do with it. And again, you can play with it, change up whatever you want. Every time you click something, you will have to click visualize so that it'll change things around and you'll see how it changes your design. So you can really do it however you want. What else is cool is you can click on the word and you'll see kind of where your words lay. Really fun, really, really cool. Again, you can change how many words you have, you can do all sorts of things. So like if I wanna change it to like 90 words or not one word, but like you can make it have less words. So it's really just up to you. You can also change the density of the words, which is a really fun one to play with. And I'm gonna click visualize. There's just, again, just play with it. Get used to it, start playing with it. 
Um, it does offer like a couple options where you can like take the words outside of the letters, but truly so much that you can do with this super, super fun. Then all you have to do is click download and you'll see that you have a ton of different options. What I like to use is the SVG because then you don't have to again, clean it up in any way, but you can just simply download it and you're good to go. Be sure to play around with this website, super fun, really easy to use, and I have a great time playing with it, and I think we can make some beautiful word art items. This would be great for like a graduation gift, Father's Day, Mother's Day, all sorts of things. You can use people's names, so much that you can do with this. So be sure to check out wordart.com. This is also a website that I've shown you before, but it's always a good one to remind you of, PNG2SVG. This is really easy to use, but just keep in mind there's a lot of ads and things because it's a free website. So just be really careful where you click. So what you're gonna see, you'll see some like start things. These are like ads, do not click on them. What you're gonna do is go down here right under where it says how to convert the PNG to an SVG file. You'll see where it has a drag or drop a file or choose a file. I'm gonna choose a file and I'm gonna go into my Cricut folder and I'll just find like a random Disney one that way we can take a look and see how it comes out. So let's go ahead to the Cricut files. And let's find a Disney one. Now, I don't like to use anything super complicated when showing you guys this, but I think this one's pretty good. And it's really easy to have it kind of convert. Now, I will say it does take a few minutes, so give it a second and you'll see here that it pops up at the bottom. Now it's gonna ask us how many colors and we'll kind of count them. So we have one, two, three, four for black, five for white, and then six would be this like lighter blue. Cause what I'm seeing is it's not picking up our white. So I'm gonna give it a sixth color and see if I can kind of get it to pick up that white. It's picking up a weird green somewhere and you can always play with like the simplify as well. There's a couple things that you can do to kind of mess with it. You'll want to kind of play with it a little bit and see, you know, what works. But what I'm going to do is click generate and we'll see how it looks. This is not perfect. So this will take some time to get used to using and just play around with your different images. This one does have several colors. And honestly, I probably wouldn't worry about this bright yellow because I would probably just change it to the same color blue that he has here. But let's see how this comes up. Now this does take a minute and you'll see here that Stitch's eyes are pink, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. The buttons are pink too. We could easily change those in design space. So once you're happy and it looks pretty good, it looks about what it's supposed to look like. There's just a few changes that we would have to make. Now what you can always do is you can also try to simplify it and I'm just gonna see what happens. That's one of the great things about this is you can just sort of try it out, see what happens, play around with it, see what works. Simplifying it may not have worked on this one, it probably won't, but it is something that you can use and learn how to do and it's super, super easy. But again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you are using contour in certain things, but otherwise it's not bad. So I'd say that's pretty good. I don't think it looks bad at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and click download SVG. I'm gonna save it into my Cricut folder and I'm gonna call it Poo and Stitch. And this one I will show you over in Design Space so that you can see how it comes up. So over in Design Space, what we're gonna do is choose the Upload button and click Upload Image. Then I'm gonna click Browse and we'll find that image that we saved of Winnie the Pooh and Stitch. So again, I'm just gonna go into my Cricut folder and I know that I called it Poo and Stitch SVG. I'll go ahead and select it and click Open. So here's our image and you can see it's an SVG. Go ahead and click Upload. And once it's up into our recent uploads, select it and add it to the canvas. Now this can take a second because there are quite a few colors, but we're gonna take a look and see how this came out. It may be a hot mess, it may be okay, but we will need to do some contouring and fixing to it which I show you in lots of other videos, but I'll just show you really quick what it looks like ungrouped. So you can see how that SVG design program did. So here is like the face and his belly. Then we have the pink parts, which again, we'd need to change the eyes and the buttons, but that's easy enough. The black I would do as a solid background because everything else will be laid on top of that. Then we have the yellow for their suits. And again, you could totally change the color of the feet 
And then we have their other little body parts. So his little outfit and then Stitch's face and hand. So you can see it did a pretty good job. They look pretty clean and I'd say I'd call it a win. It looks okay. So I would definitely check out PNG to SVG and take a look and see what you think. It's really fun, but again, just play around with it. You'll learn how to use it. This next website is so fun. I've been playing with it for a while and like I'm obsessed. You can make all sorts of different templates that you can use in design space with these. So you can see we have bags, curved boxes, heart shaped boxes, pass part out, which that's like a, it's got like a hole in it. I don't know how else to describe that. We have shallow boxes. There are boxes with lids, cylinders, mailers, pillow packs, cubes, spheres, poly, polygonal boxes. I can talk match boxes, elliptical boxes, cake slice boxes. There's literally a million things. There's a coffin, explosion boxes, so many fun things. You can make gemstone boxes. So you can really go crazy with this website, but just for like simplicity's sake right now, let me just show you how to make a plain old box with a lid. So you can select your item and I like to measure in inches because I'm from America and we don't know metric. So I'm going to choose inches and you just need to know kind of about how big you want your box to be. So let's say that my box is going to be eight inches long and let's make it six inches wide and let's make the height four inches. Then you just need to change your lid height if you want to. It does do it kind of automatically, but if you want a deeper lid, you can definitely do that. Now over here, it kind of does everything for you and you can just leave it as is. I think it looks pretty good and we can just download the SVG. Go ahead and click create and you'll see that it's gonna pop up and ask you to save it. Over on Design Space, click Upload, and then just like you did every other time, upload the image. Browse it, and again, it's in our Cricut folder, and we called it Box Template, so I just have to search Box, select it, and click Open. Now, what you're going to see is you kind of have this weird-looking SVG, but don't worry, we will use this. It'll be fine. Click Upload, and then select the image and add it to the canvas. Now you'll see that the box is pretty big, so you may need to mess around with the measurements just a little bit once you have created your template, but this is a great way to make a template. And then again, you may just need to play around with it a little bit more to get it exactly the way you need it to be to fit onto your paper or your design. But this is a great option to making some really fun templates. So be sure to check out templatemaker.nl. You guys hear me talk about Creative Fabrica all the time because I really do truly love them and I think that you do get a lot with their subscription. I'm gonna link down, low where, down below where you can sign up for a $1 all access subscription for your first month and then $19 a month after that. But what's great with them is not only do they offer like designs and fonts, they also have some fun tools. So they have things like very similar to the word art, but in this one you have shape cloud. So there's a lot of different things. It's very similar where you can do that and you can change your words. So let's go ahead and get all of these words out of here. And let's just add some words, cat, dog, fish, bunny, uh, bird, alligator, goose, hippo, just all sorts of things. You can just add whatever you want. Then you can choose your shape, choose your font. I'm just gonna pick something random and you can choose your color. Now this one does have a little bit um, like less of what I would call personalization compared to the other one, but it is really fun. You can check, like collect, like choose scheme colors, then update changes and you'll see that it will change my design over to my words with my shape and my colors. Now granted that is an awful font, but I just chose something random. So let's go ahead and change our font and just see what that looks like. So again, similar idea. You can just simply make your own design however you want. Again, a few less options, but still a great way to play around with this. You can simply download your design and you'll see again, you have SVGs, PDFs, and PNGs. Another great tool that they have is also the font cloud. Now font cloud is very, very much like wordmark.it. It's a font manager and it works on helping you choose your fonts and it's super, super simple to use. They walk you through everything. I won't show you because it's very similar to wordmark.it. 
And the other fun stuff that they have is like the craft club, the artistry, and they have a whole inspiration section. But they also have things like the classes, which you'll see I have some classes on here that you can watch. They are exclusive to Creative Fabrica, so you won't find them anywhere else. You can see here that we have making planner stickers, weaving small decals, but I also have a few of my crochet um, classes on here. So I have how to crochet basic stitches, and then I also teach you guys how to make a really cute elephant. Super fun, super easy, really, really, really cool classes. And you can see there's tons of other crochet classes and things like that. So be sure to check out Creative Fabrica. They are a wealth of designs, fonts, information, classes, different tools that you can use, and they're definitely one of my favorites. Pinterest is one not to miss out on. I absolutely adore Pinterest, and I think it's one of the best websites to get really great inspiration from. You can always follow me on here too. I pin lots of things. You can see I have some different pins here that I've created, but then I also pin other people's things for inspiration. So what I like to do is I'll go into search, and you'll see here that it's kind of making me search my own pins, not really what I wanna do, but let's take a look and look at Cricut projects. And over here, we're gonna just take it to um, all pins. Now you're gonna find so many different creators and information on here and really cool ideas for ways to use your Cricut. So what you can do is just browse, get some ideas. You can pin something if you like it and wanna recreate it or use it for your own inspiration. So there's a lot that you can do. I love this little antisocial butterfly cup. There's a lot of great projects on here, so be sure to not sleep on Pinterest. Between the fact that you can find little videos with hacks like this one, you can also find little inspiration posts, you can find websites with SVGs, you can find things like this where it's like a dog mom bundle SVG. So there's just a ton of great projects on here that you can find, learn from, see if you get some inspiration. This is a great place to spend a little bit of time and really let those creative juices start flowing I will link my profile down below if you'd like to follow me and check out what I like to pin. Whatthefont.com is a lifesaver. It can actually help you identify fonts and it's not only on your phone, but it's also on the website. So you can get the app as well, it just depends on what you wanna do. But what you need to do is drop an image here to identify the font or click here to upload an image. So let's go ahead and click here to upload an image and let's go to our desktop and to our Cricut folder. And remember, we saved that Corinne, so we'll just use that because that's pretty easy. Now, it may crop it a little small, so you just might need to make it slightly bigger. I like to try to make sure every little piece of the word is in the box. Then just click this big blue arrow and it will help you identify the font. Now, obviously, we know what font this is and it's not perfect. It's not always gonna find you the exact font, but it will find you similar. This font that I used is called Chili, and I use it all the time. But you can see that they found fonts that are pretty similar. They may not find that exact one, but you can see they're all fairly similar fonts. And then it'll actually link you as to where you can get that font from. So tons and tons of little options, and you can also click Show Me More Results. Lots of fun things that you can do, and it'll help you really identify very close fonts to what you're looking for. Now, I will say that that chili font looks very similar to a lot of fonts, so it probably isn't gonna pick up the exact font that you're looking for. But it's a great way to really help you find something similar, if not the exact same font. So if you're unsure of what font it is or you want something very similar, whatthefont.com is an awesome resource and I highly recommend checking it out. Now I know that Cricut has added a monogram feature to Design Space. And while it is nice and it is cute, it's still not my favorite because I really do prefer monogrammaker.com. I just feel like you get a lot more options and I totally did that wrong, there we go. And you just get a little bit more play around than you have with Design Space as of right now. Now there are lots and lots of styles here that you can choose from. You can see there are so many really beautiful designs. So we'll just kind of pick something. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we can just choose one of these fun fonts. So let's do something a little more simple. Let's just do this one for now. The nice thing is too, now we can go ahead and select a frame and there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of frames. There's this cute little doggy paw and you can move them around on the screen. So like, see how my name doesn't quite fit in there? 
I can make that paw bigger and put my little initials in there. There's so much that you can do, but you can really just play around with it and really figure out like what you like and how you want it to look. You can change your colors, you can change your scale, you can change all sorts of things. So it's really fun and you can just select your layers to edit them. So if I wanna change the color of my name, I can do that. Lots and lots that you can do. Once you're happy with it, click save and it's gonna ask you how you want to save it. Again, offers the SVG option. Then just simply save this. And again, you just open it in Cricut Design Space just like you would any other SVG. Really, really simple and it's all good to go. This is just a super great option if you wanna make a monogram and you don't wanna use the Cricut Monogram Maker or you don't have Design Space access because if you don't have that, your monogram maker doesn't work. This is definitely a fantastic option to make monograms and I feel like you can do a lot of personalization with this. There's so many different frames, so many different options. So just play around with it and see what you like. Super easy to use and a really, really great website and it's completely free. I put together the list of all my favorite websites so that it's super easy for you to download. Now, if you're not a member of the site, it's totally free to join, but this is a members only product. So if you wanna join, go to corinneblackstone.com. Click on resources and you'll scroll down right where it says join here. It'll bring up our little sign up option and you can easily sign up to be part of the website. Again, totally free. Once you're a member, you're gonna have access to all of our members only items, which includes my Disney color charts, also, all of those free SVGs that I offer and the favorite website list. There is a lot more coming for free, so be sure to join. Again, a completely free item. You just need to join the site. Super, super fun, super free, and we're gonna have a lot of fun resources for you so that you can have access to all sorts of great things so you can learn more about your Cricut. I hope you guys had fun checking out all of my favorite websites. If you have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. And as always, happy crafting.